means all right this is mariah welcome to class guys uh, we have the uh, dnh 146 perio final review it, it's comprehensive of like 28 chapters and it included kate trawick joanna mana uh, rebecca van horn elizabeth vu and yours truly so we have a Okay, so Miss D, I'm gonna need you to undisable the screen sharing thing. Disable it? Undisable it. It says the host has disabled participant screen sharing. Oh, wait a minute, okay. Uh, what do I do? <laughs> uh, my mom says, have you make this will stop other screen sharing. Do you want to continue? Okay, so hold on. All right, so I'm about to do that, but I want you to see this gray picture here. That's actually a PowerPoint that has about 15 questions from each chapter. So you definitely will want to pull that up and do some independent study on that as well. But we have a game called Kahoot where we all will be able to um, there it is these questions together in a more fun way now i cannot see the chat like at all so we're gonna do this a, a nice easy way we have a setup like we did with the lectures that we've been getting some of them if you go to either kahoot.it or go to the Kahoot app, type in the PIN 2408634, and that'll get you into the game. One player, thank you, Kara. Kate, Chris, Sarah, Adriana. Haley, Sheila, Kamit. I'm Jane. not in. So, wait, I don't text 2408634. I have to get the Kahoot app. Right, or go to kahoot.it website. Oh, oh. Please. Got 13, 14. Good. How many do we have signed in right now? 29. Oh, good. Okay. Oh, Thank wow. You. Okay. Yeah, I know. Oh, somebody logged out. <laughs> oh, good thing. Good. As soon as everybody logs in, I'll go ahead and hit start. I want to get everybody the opportunity to earn these points. So I don't know how many of us were playing the Jeopardy or watching the Jeopardy games, but it's very, very similar. So this is going to track the points for us, so I won't need a tracker. So we can't cheat. No cheating. That's right. <laughs> I did post, uh, ladies, I did post the um, chapters, let me see, 20, whatever the last group was in charge of, 24 through 27 or 23, 24 through 27. That is already on Canvas. And I will be posting the review questions that um, were sent to me as well. Awesome. Uh, uh, Joanna <laughs> says she's got the answers. <laughs> she does, yeah. Eighteen players. All right. So, if, I'm I'm sure some of us are probably getting that app still downloaded. It's Kahoot 
application on your phone or go to www.kahoot.it and type in the game pin on the screen. <laughs> Somebody's, oh, hey, you guys are choosing some funny names. I'm not going to know who's winning. While we're waiting, um, I want to urge everybody to please fill out the um, course evaluation. Uh, my courses are at a 75% response rate. The college looks at this at, as well as the response rate, so don't make me look bad. Fill it out. Um, and also, there's still uh, one student has not um, determined whether she wants a letter grade or not. And I have 34 incompletes waiting to send off to um, Dr. Cook. So uh, the deadline for that is, is coming up, but the earlier the better for that, please. Can you tell who the person missing on the letter grade is? I'm not gonna call anybody out. That's not what I'm asking. <laughs> what were you asking? I'm trying to get Kahoot. Say what? Because you know, sometimes we, we you know, I'm pretty darn sure that I did it. In fact, I remember doing it. You well. did. You did. Okay. Sometimes I was worried about those things not sticking, you know. Do I do the game pin? Is that the, oh, the game pin? It, that's what it says. Mm -hmm. it, Adriana had to send me the, the link. <laughs> it's okay. We keep adding and gaining, or add, uh, gaining and losing players right this second. Not sure what's going on there. My dyslexia is coming up. Oh, we all compiled these lists of questions, but Joanna took the time to input 75 of them into this game and she added really pretty pictures so it's very pleasant. I hope, uh, oh, go ahead. Is that uh, Kate? All right, so we have 23 players. If um, anybody is needing to sign in after this or whatnot, uh, if somebody can just help them with the pin, that'd be thoughtful and much appreciated. All right, Perio final, 75 questions. Are you ready? Which type of the following is not a type of gingival fiber? Circular, transeptal, oblique, or alveolar gingival? And I lost my app. All right, that question was oblique. Two people got that right. Excellent, see the lovely scoreboard. Miss Kate and Elizabeth are in the lead. What is considered the gold standard for treating periodontitis? Brushing and flossing, prescription mouth rinse, scale and root planing, snacking and napping. <laughs> I think it's snacking and napping. <laughs> That's our quarantine brain. <laughs> right. It is indeed scaling and root planing. Very good. Watch those scores tally up. And next quiz. What is the primary etiologic factor in periodontal diseases? Sugar, calculus, 
smoking or biofilm. If you can hear me eating my yogurt, I am sorry. It's good to hear some things never change. <laughs> <That's> true. <laughs> All right, very good. It is indeed biofilm. Next. T cells are the target of what virus? Herpes simplex virus, rubella, HIV, or syphilis? HIV, yes, very good, very good. Next. Gingivitis has been characterized by a shift from streptococcus dominated plaque to actinomyces dominated plaque. True or false? And if you forget the question here at the top of the screen, it is listed. <clears throat> True it is. Very good. Next. Gingivitis may precede periodontitis. However, periodontitis can develop without gingivitis occurring first. True or false? <clears throat> False it is. Zer gut. Miss Kate is still in the lead. Look at that. If biofilm is not removed, how long does it take for gingivitis to develop? 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours, or one week? <laughs> This is a cute little picture, Joanna. Seventy two hours. Seventy two hours it is. Jesse just jumped up to the lead there. One of the first defensive cells to be recruited to a site of inflammation. Macrophages, lymphocytes, mast cells, or neutrophils? I'm yelling out the questions inside my head. I'm yelling out the answers. <laughs> neutrophils, yes. Wow, I'm surprised everybody didn't get that one. Well, you know, this is a good review. This is considered the most important local contributing factor for periodontal diseases. Dental biofilm, dental calculus, gingival curricular fluid, or tooth position. I blame the isolation brain, Misty. <laughs> dental calculus, ding, 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 ding. Yeah, these questions are included in the PowerPoint too, so no worries, you were able to review them as often as you want. Radiographic evaluation of calculus is an effective diagnostic method, true or false? False it is. So it's 45% will be, um, is the amount, average amount that you can see um, for interproximal 
calculus up to 45%. So it's really not. All right. Which of the following can result in the impaction of food on the gingiva and into the gingival sulcus? Open contacts, unevenable, mar uneven marginal ridges, irregular position of teeth, or all of the above. And I'm telling you, that popcorn is annoying. Ding, 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 ding. All of the above, indeed. <sighs> Patients taking oral bisphosphonates for osteoporosis may have a rare adverse reaction. What is this reaction? Come on, guys. Is it osteonecrosis of the jaw, stomach ulcers, vomiting and diarrhea, or depression? Oh. You guys got this. Yay! It is indeed osteonecrosis of the jaw. Every one of us got it right. It's only been drilled into our heads now for at least one semester, if not two. <laughs> Patients have a 50% increased risk for heart disease and a 30% increased risk for stroke if they also have periodontitis, true or false. True indeed. Nailed it. And currently we have Jesse in the lead at 12,902 points and Kevin Neat following her right behind. Kevin Neat is on fire. Early exposure to inflammatory diseases include periodontal disease may increase the risk for developing this, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, obesity, or Alzheimer's. Get your votes in there. I was actually talking to somebody about this the other day and they were shocked by the answer. Alzheimer's it is, way to go. There is evidence to, to suggest that it may lead to Alzheimer's. What type of anaerobic bacteria found in saliva can be aspirated into the lungs and called res cause respiratory diseases? P. gingivalis, Fusobacterium nucleatum, or Bacterioitis oralis, or all of the above. Bacteroidis oralis. All of the above, indeed. All those nasty bacteria can cause respiratory diseases. Next. In what stage of periodontal disease would first clinical signs of gingivitis be seen? Initial, early, established, or advanced? I find questions like this tricky, especially when these are our options. It is indeed early, yes. Initial, you can't see anything clinically at all. It's just the early session that you can. Next. Gavin Neat just jumped to the top. A pocket with no alveolar and supporting bone loss in the junctional epithelium has not moved apically is called a pita pocket, a pseudo pocket, a poly pocket, or a periodontal pocket. <laughs> I wrote that one. <laughs> that tooth is thinking real hard. It is indeed a pseudo pocket. Somebody chose Polly Pocket. Was that Miss Humus D? <laughs> that should be a bonus point. That was cute. 
Peta and Polly. I love it. All right. Avnit is in the lead at 14,926. Yay! This is the term for soft tissue inflammation and supporting bone loss surrounding an implant. Pericoronitis, periimplantitis, perimucositis, or periimplant disease. And supporting bone loss. Periimplantitis it is. Okay, before you go on, now this is me as a student because I'm, I'm sort of taking, taking this quiz. Peri implant disease describes both of them, doesn't it? Peri implant disease does, but with so, so you're asking for us to differentiate. Bones. I'm just I'm just arguing like students argue. You so. are you're great at that. <laughs> so peri implantitis includes supporting bone loss around the implant. Um, four of us chose peri mucositis. They're very very close, but there's no bone loss. No bone loss, and nobody chose peri implant disease. Okay, so I would see. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Next, which is the best answer? Yes, localized juvenile periodontal disease is also known as localized aggressive periodontitis, generalized aggressive periodontitis, aggressive periodontitis, and early periodontitis. Again, localized juvenile periodontal disease is known as what? Localized aggressive, yes. <clears throat> so they changed it. So basically anything that's juvenile for this, for periodontitis is now aggressive. Just replace the juvenile with aggressive and you're good to go. And the reason for that is because it can be found in not just juveniles. We had Jesse jumped up to the top, 16605. Moderate chronic periodontitis has what level of clinical attachment loss? One to two millimeters cow, three to four millimeter cow, five millimeter cow, or greater than five millimeter cow? He dropped an onion. Yes, my cat is chewing on an onion, guys. So uh, I, just, I, I just want to reiterate here for it's clinical attachment loss. So when you are doing your perio uh, in, in clinic uh, and it's asking you about the CAL, the three to four millimeters or one to two millimeters is from where the bone is supposed to be. And that bone is supposed to be how far from the CEJ. So that's where you're not looking at the CEJ and tallying up the uh, millimeters. You're looking at where the bone is supposed to be from the CEJ and taking it from there. And that seems to be some confusion. Now, these measurements that I wrote down in this question, they're straight off of one of the, uh, a lot of the charts that are in the book. So what helps me to remember this is moderate equals number two, the second option, mild, moderate, advanced, and excessive is how my brain works. So if that helps, then awesome. Moderate equals 3.3 to 4 millimeters cal. It can be confusing. It can be, yes. Just a little cheat code basically for you guys. The tooth has facial and lingual bone support, but not interproximal. What is the term for this? Intrabony defect, alveolar necrosis, two wall bony defect, osteonecrosis of the jaw. Two wall bony defect, good job. Okay, and when it's interproximally, it's got another name that you can use. Does anybody remember that? Is that like crater or something? That's a crater. Yep. 
Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> I don't have the ability to give extra points, though. Sorry. Sarah French is in the lead now with 17, 946. I'm liking seeing how this is like all over the map on who's in the lead. This is good. A key feature of necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis is superation, alveolar bone loss, gingival abscess, punched out interdental papillae. This has also been like drilled into our brains, I think. Punched out interdental papillae, correct, or papillae. The major bacteria found in NUG is Candida, P. intermedia, P. gingivalis, and Streptococcus sangui. P. intermedia. Oh, Jesse's in the lead at 19,450. The most frequently seen sign of occlusal trauma is tooth mobility, tooth fracture, TMJ pain, or gingival inflammation. Ooh, are we getting stumped? Tooth mobility it is. Sarah French back in the lead. Which of the terms describes when occlusal trauma causes injury in the periodontium with reduced bone support? Primary occlusal trauma, secondary occlusal trauma, tooth fracture, tooth mobility, all oh, that poor tooth. Secondary occlusal trauma. Very good, very good. Flattened occlusal surfaces of teeth is an example of attrition, abfraction, erosion, or tooth mobility. <clears throat> I've seen a lot of people with teeth like that. Attrition it is. Many types of bacteria are found in periodontal abscesses, which is not typically found. P. gingivalis, P. intermedia, Fusobacterium, or Aggregatobacter actinomycetum chromatans. I don't know. I'm going to have to look that one down. Look that sound that one out later. Yeah, the AA, exactly. As Miss D called it, right? Yes. <laughs> I remember that. That was in my first semester. AA. Which type of abscess would cause a tooth to tender to percussion? Gingival abscess, periodontal abscess, periapical abscess, or pericoronal, pericoronal abscess? Periapical, exactly. I'm assuming because it's at the extreme apical end of the tooth, therefore it creates more of a vibration, right? Because it's more cushioned. Is that right, Misty? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how it makes sense in my brain, that's for sure. What is a localized infection involving the gingiva adjacent to a partially erupted tooth? Apthous ulcers, pericoronitis, gingival abscess, or periodontal abscess? Key question, partially erupted tooth.
ding, 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 periocoronitis, yes. Usually the third molar. Cav needs back in the lead. Get a girl. All the following are part of the personal profile except one. Which is the exception? Name, chief complaint, age, or occupation. Chief complaint it is. So personal profile is all the personal stuff, what they do for a job, how old they are, what's their name, but their chief complaint isn't necessarily personal. It's, hey, look, I need help with this. A new medical history should be filled out at each visit, every two visits, yearly, when enough time allows. Yearly, yearly indeed. So who knows what the clinic policy is? How frequently does a new medical history need to be filled out? Um, yeah, every three years, it, unless there's substantive changes. So if the patient comes in that's had a lot of changes, uh, you want them to fill out another one, but otherwise it's good for every three years. And uh, yes, you update it every visit, even from morning to afternoon. Yep. So is it three years to assuming that that patient is with the same clinician for the whole two years of the program, basically? No. Okay. No, it doesn't matter who they go to. Okay. And next. All of the following are risk factors for root caries except one, which is the exception. Lack of fluoride, smoking, advanced age, or implants. Which one is not a risk factor for root caries? Those poor teeth. Mm. Implants. Implants is not correct. Cav needs holding on tight. This stain is associated with gram positive rods and is more common with women and children. Is it green stain, black line stain, yellow stain, or brown stain? These are great pictures. They are, aren't they? They're super <laughs> cute. Black line stain. Yes, that's all women and children there. I don't know why that one sticks in my head. But. This stain originates from chromogenic bacteria and is common in children. Yellow stain, brown stain, green stain, or black line stain. And that tooth's taking a bath here. <laughs> green stain, yes. Chromogenic bacteria. So what helps me out in this one is the chrome part. And it may not make a whole lot of sense to everybody, but it reminds me me of chlorophyll for some reason and so that's why I think of green. Whatever works, right? Mr. Dontium is a smoker with gingival tissue that is hard and non-resilient. What term would best describe this? Retractable, edematous, fibrotic, or healthy? Hard and not resilient. Fibrotic it is, yes. Retractable would mean that you pull it apart. You can pull it away. Fibrotic is 
full of fibers, so it's going to get tighter and firmer. What term best describes enlarged papillae due to accumulation of fluid, blunted, bulbous, cratered, or absent? Hmm. And another term that's not on there that can be used? Edematous. Edematous, exactly. Yes, indeed. Healthy gingiva can be red in color due to individuals with thin oral epithelium. True or false? True, 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 true. Because if it's thinner, then you can get to the vascular area quicker, to those capillaries. Or whatnot. Sarah is in the lead at 28,977. All the following are true regarding pregnancy induced gingivitis except one. Which one is the exception? Gingiva is edematous with a shiny, smooth surface. Molars show the most inflammation. In more severe cases, pregnancy tumors may occur or all of the above. Boy, that's wordy. Woo. Gingiva is a dematous with a shiny tumor surface. All of the above, indeed. Ding, ding, ding. What term best describes a patient, patient's gingival contour if they are misusing or overusing until dental eads? Blunted, pyramidal, rolled, or knife edged? Overusing interdental aids or misusing. Blunted indeed. So pyramidal is the same as knife edged, in my opinion. Um, that's going to be like the normal gingiva. And then rolled is more poofy. So blunted is like the top of the pyramid or top of the knife edge got chopped off, basically, or it got squished by that interdental aid. Periodontal probing is important in determining past periodontal disease activity. True or false? Periodontal probing is important in determining past periodontal disease activity. True, true, true. Cab needs to regain the lead. Single probing measurements adequately reflect disease progression. True or false? This is 100% false. You can't get a progression with only one measurement, a one-time measurement. You gotta have at least two or three. What surface would be more likely to result in an error while probing? Tooth number 13, mesial, number five, buccal, 25, lingual, or 24, facial? I just want to listen to be all hmm. over the map. <laughs> this is a hard one. Right? I think that's going to be all over the map. Okay. 13 mesial. Very good. Very good. And and why? I have to look that up. <laughs> I have no clue. Let's see. 13. <laughs> the, the, the rationale is going to be on the PowerPoint that's posted. It's because it's, uh, it's, because it's interproximal and has a coal, right? Right. You have to angle the probe. 
Oh, I'm thinking, well, it's not the one with the mesial depression because that would be number 12. Okay, yeah, it makes sense now. Thank you, lady. That was, that, and then that was a very good thought-provoking question. Mm, most definitely. A mucogingival defect is defined as a discrepancy in the relationship between the mucogingival junction and the clinical attachment level, junctional epithelium, enamel of the tooth, or free gingival margin. A mucogingival defect is defined as a discrepancy between the MGJ and the free gingival margin. One of those things that we measure during our forever measuring of the burial portion of our clinic. All of the following are indications for selecting a periapical radiograph, except one. Which one is the exception? Determining morphology of a root, viewing impacted teeth, evaluating implants, viewing apex of root for pathology. Which one is not an indication for selecting a periapical? Viewing impacted teeth. Very good. Oh, Sheila's on fire. This type of bony pocket is associated with vertical bone loss. Pseudo pocket, super bony pocket, infra bony pocket, gingival pocket. Infra bony pockets, yes, yes, yes. Okay, and before you go on, can you click back to that picture? What else would you want to rule out with, um, with what you were seeing? Just trying to take it an extra step. No, oh, I cannot go you back. You can't go picture. back. Okay, so there was localized bone loss and it was severe bone loss. So what are the two uh, for when you have a molar involved, because the bone around everything else on the periapical looked like it was uh, in a good position. So the, um, the two things that I would think of would be the localized aggressive periodontitis because it involves the molars and the anterior teeth, mm -hmm. and also a root fracture is something else that can cause something like a localized defect of that deep. You're probing around, then all of a sudden the probe sinks, uh, and it wasn't there before uh, because you're looking at your uh, probe readings and you either missed it or it wasn't there. So one of the first things is, oh my gosh, I missed it. Then the second thing is maybe it's a root fracture. Okay. Uh, you can click show media if you wanted to. So what? media. Oh, oh, there you go. <laughs> Thank you, Elizabeth. <laughs> I was afraid. No problem. All right. So sometimes, um, sometimes a root fracture will appear like this. You can't see the fracture, but then if a uh, CBCT, a 3D scanner is taken, you can um, see the see the fracture. So this would either be an extraction or sending a uh, with this amount of bone loss, they wouldn't send them to an endodontist, but um, they probably recommend an extraction, bone fill, and an implant. However, um, we don't know for sure. A bone fill, how do they do that? Well, that was last week. That was with the uh, uh, autocasts and stuff? Yes, okay. like the, yes. Endogain, something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, very nice. What percentage of bone loss is classified as moderate? Less than 20%, 20 to 50%, 40 to 70%, or all of the above?
20 to 50% in DD. Moderate is usually the second option. <laughs> Just above minimal. Oh, here I come back. You are. <laughs> Which of the following antimicrobial mouth rinses contain the highest concentration of alcohol? Periogard, Listerine, Scope, or Chlorhexidine? So trivia, who remembers what the uh, original concentration was? 15%. Listerine, indeed. Yeah, it was 26 something percent. Yep. Way too high. <laughs> what kind of substance is used for hypersensitivity and remineralization? Fluoride, alcohol, Listerine, chlorhexidine. <laughs> Why do you have to be so sensitive? <laughs> I think Joanna was having fun looking for these images. <laughs> Fluoride indeed. I think that the little picture helped. Kavnita is holding hard and strong on first place here. Good girl. Love it. Periodontal surgical therapy is contraindicated or at least delayed in all of the following except uncontrolled systemic diseases, patients taking IV bisphosphonates, pocket elimination or reduction on teeth when with gingival po periodontal pockets, or patients taking anticoagulant medications. indicated or at least delayed pocket elimination or reduction on teeth with gingival periodontal pockets I'm glad that we wrote these really wordy ones because it gets us ready for Ms. B <laughs> all right <laughs> Gingivectomy is the excision or removal of the gingiva to eliminate a pocket. What is contraindicated in this procedure? Lack of attached gingiva, super bony periodontal pockets, gingival enlargement, or pseudo pockets. What is contraindicated? Lack of attached gingiva, that's right, because if there's not attached gingiva, we can't remove what's there to remove. Adverse effects of surgical procedures include all of the following except tooth mobility, gingival recession, dental hypersensitivity, and lower risk of root caries. Adverse effects include all of these except which one lower risk of tooth care root caries indeed that's related to bacteria jesse has regained the lead all of the following are defects that heal best after regeneration except one wall bony defect, class two buccal frication on mandibular molars, deeper bony defects, deeper than three millimeter, or a three-way infrabony defect. One wall bony defect. It does not. Sheila's climbing up. What type of bone graft can be obtained from human cadavers with bone forming properties? Xenograft, alloplasts, allografts, or autografts? This is human cadavers. <laughs> My mom's helping to listen. <laughs> Yes, allografts. <laughs> Auto is when it comes from yourself. 
aloe is from another human, Zeno is from an animal. <laughs> Zeno equals do, <laughs> in my opinion. Oh, that's a good way to remember it. I mean, it's the different letter, but. <laughs> yeah, sounds the same. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. D. I appreciate your support. No, I mean, you, but you got to think of stuff like that, like me doing, you know, IgA for saliva, <laughs> whatever works. What type of bone is considered the gold standard that bone alternatives must meet? Xenograph, alloplasts, allografts, or autografts? It's a gold standard. Well, I mean, the gold standard, what's the best option if you're going to implant something? Autographs, right, because, all right, let me put my coffee down here for this. All right, so the gold standard would be a self-graft, all right? Whenever you get any kind of transplant surgery uh, for, like, skin grafts or whatnot, like uh, for um, people that are caught in a fire, um, fire damage on their skin, they're going to remove skin or bone or whatnot from that person before they go and get something else because it's genetically the same. Same equals less likely for risk of any negative outcome. So, yes. What is an obvious sign of implant failure indicating the lack of osseointegration, bleeding, Mobility, deep probing depths, or edematous tissue. Zoe, you start in five minutes. Mobility. Okay, good. <laughs> I don't think that five minutes is accurate. <laughs> All right, Jesse's got the lead. At 46555, which structure provides a seal at the base of the sulcus against invasion of bacterial substance? Connective tissue, sulcular epithelium, free marginal gingiva, or the JE? The JE and D, junctional epithelium. The seal is the JE. That's what protects those bacterial substances from getting down under the grooves. What contrary exists, controversy exists regarding instrumentation of healthy implants? Teflon, rubber, periodontal probes, plastic instruments. Periodontal probing, that's right. This is on fire. Gingival curvicular fluid originates from blank, which then flows into the blank. Lamina dura, gingival crevice. Lamina propria, JE. Lamina propria, gingival crevice, or lamina dura, JE. Lamina propria and the gingival, gingival crevice. So gingival curricular fluid originates from the lamina propria, which then flows into the gingival crevice. So gingival curricular fluid, that's gingival crevice right there in that word. So we know it's going to be gingival crevice. We know it's not going to be these suckers over here. And then lamina dura is hard. So that... It's just from the brain marks on that one. Which of the following tests have little use and applicability in the diagnosis of periodontics? Host response tests, microbial assays, DNA probe, and both A and B. Have little use and applicability in the diagnosis of periodontics. Both A and B. Very good. A 
what type of arachidonic acid indicates an increased risk of periodontal disease when found in high levels in the GC, GCF? Ooh, I like that one. E, prostaglandin E1, prostaglandin E2, or prostaglandin D2. Prostaglandin E2, yes. <coughs> what is the most frequently performed periodontal surgery? RCT, flap surgery, gingivectomy, or tissue grafting? What is the most frequently performed? Flap surgery. Patients who should be treated by a periodon periodontist include all the following except aggressive periodontitis, peri-implant disease, severe chronic periodontitis, or all of the above should be treated by a periodontist. Mm. That person looks like they're in pain. Or a first year student did the probing. It's what it's going to be like when you go back to clinic. <laughs> it's like we'll be working with all thumbs. <laughs> Which end of the instrument am I supposed to use? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Seeing as how like most of us don't have any practice done with us. Oh, I know. I know. All right. Next. Phase one of periodontal therapy includes all the following except oral hygiene and instructions, periodontal debridement, periodontal surgery, or fluoride application. Except. Periodontal surgery. Periodontal surgery is not part of phase one. Let's try to fix it before we do the surgery. Do some other things. Which type of instrumentation produces better results in deep pockets like six to nine millimeters? Hand activated instrumentation, ultrasonic instrumentation, both A and B, or none of the above? Better results. That's a tricky question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> both A and B, that's right. Both ultrasonic and hand activated instrumentations are viewed as equal in this. I like that. And how, um, when, how deep does a pocket, curette efficiency, I guess, is considered what? We can scale pretty well up to how many millimeters, and then after that, it's a shot in the dark. Do you remember mm -hmm. curette efficiency? Is it five millimeters? It was four. It was actually four millimeters. So if you've got somebody with deeper than four millimeters, we do the best we can, but studies have shown we ain't getting it. Oh, 3.75. All right, cab meat. <laughs> but wouldn't you extract a nine millimeter pocket? It really depends on what the situation is. Is it a localized pocket? Is it something that is requiring uh, a root canal therapy? Is it somebody who refuses to get the tooth extracted? Uh, so you have to take a look at the entire picture before you can make was that determination. You're going to be seeing patients in the clinic that are coming in with generalized six, seven millimeter pockets and localized eight and nine that are just holding on for dear life. Kara said, oh, you had somebody with 11. I mean, yes. it's, it's not ideal, but um, yeah. Kara, you guy. Oh, I remember that. I was typing in your numbers for you, Kara. <laughs> All right, next. What is the type of healing that occurs after a subgingival periodontal debridement? Formation of new bone. PDL tightens around the tooth, JE repairs and lengthens, 
or regeneration of collagen fibers. JE repairs and lengthens. It's called a long JE. Yes. When does the greatest reduction of probing depths occur after a periodontal debridement? One to four weeks, two to six weeks, four to eight weeks, or six to 10 weeks. The greatest reduction of probing depths occur. Depths, not depths. Four to eight weeks. Jesse's holding hard and strong there at the top. Which instrument is used to detect frication involvement? Explorer, probe, neighbor's probe, sickle scaler. Those answers in there. Neighbors indeed. We're losing members here. Next. We're almost done. All of the following are reasons a patient may not comply with office visits except patients believe treatment is no longer required, fear of the dental and treatment, they love the dentist, or expense. They love the dentist, that's right. Now I'm segueing in, just taking things a little uh, farther. Remember the parameters of care that the American Academy of Periodontology has and what that is for. I'm just putting that out there. Okay. Jesse's at 59.404. All the following chemotherapeutics may be used in patients with recurrent five millimeter and above pockets that bleed except Arrestin, Periochip, Hydrogen Peroxide, or Atridox. Hydrogen Peroxide, very good. Which one of the following antimicrobial agents possesses high sensitivity to the oral soft tissues? Acetylprodeninium, alcohol, corexidine, or tetracycline? Acetylprodeninium. Acetylprodeninium. Corexidine, indeed. Very good, guys. Very good. What type of drug delivery is placed directly into the periodontal pocket with a slow release time? Systemic drugs, adjunctive systemic, controlled release, both A and B. Directly into the pocket with a slow release time. Controlled release, correct, correct, correct. Okay, and Is review uh, the term controlled release and sustained release. All right, Jesse's at 63560. All the followings are types of adverse effects of systemic antimicrobial agents except hepatox hepatotoxicity, xerostomia, fungal infection, or gastrointestinal disturbances. I'm losing my ability to speak properly. Xerostomia. Which drug is not recommended as a drug of choice for most types of dental infections, including periodontal disease? Penicillin, cephalosporin, penicillin VK, or amoxicillin? Not recommended as a drug of choice for most types of dental infections, including periodontal disease. Cephalosporin. 
penicillin based R. Which of the following type of drug is a synthetic antibiotic? Penicillins, tetracyclines, macrolids, or quinolones? Quinolones, yes, 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 yes. From quinine. That's why it works in my brain. Last one. Systemic antibiotics are indicated for all of the following except chronic periodontitis, localized aggressive periodontitis, refractory periodontal disease, or generalized aggressive periodontitis. Chronic periodontitis it is. Periofinal podium. Kavneet is the wiener. Yay! 60 out of 75. Oh, it's third place, rather. Sarah Bruno's in second place, so with 55 out of 75, and Jesse with 60 out of 75. Woohoo! Go, girls. Go, Jess. Good job, girl. <laughs> All right, so uh, thank you. Thank you, um, Team Seven, for putting this together. Uh, there is a PowerPoint that was prepared, and it has the answers to each of the questions and the page that each of um, the, the answers can be found on. So if you're finding a topic that you need to go back to, um, that can direct you for that. Um, we do have the final exam scheduled for Monday, and uh, that will be opened at 8 a.m. and go through 11.59 p.m. Um, anything you all would like to talk about? 